Hello everybody, welcome, happy Monday, and welcome to today's video, Line Woman Reviews, and welcome to my channel in general. So today I'm pretty excited. I am reviewing Half Sick of Shadows, and I'm really excited to review this because I've been looking forward to this book since either I finished or started Ash Princess, which was her previous trilogy. Um, I think it was her debut trilogy. And I love, I, I had, I think, some issues with Ash Princess, but if I reread it again, I don't know if I'll have the same issues, but I enjoyed it a lot. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, two things. One, um, I'm hoping you guys can see me well. I'm not very close to my window, but I have my curtain open so that there is light in my room. I, I'm, I'm hoping this works, but I don't know. Um, so I'm hoping you guys can see me well. I'm not moving away too close from my fan, from my fan because it's very warm in here. And due to that, I want to be as close to my fan as possible. And I don't know how well, how good the lighting is if you guys can see me. So, and so, I'm, and I'm not moving to my window because it's better where I am with my fan. And that's the background noise you're, you're hearing right now. And two, my apologies. This review might be a little bit longer. I will be touching on a couple of things that I want to mention in order to make this review work. So. Um, I'll, I will be discussing some broader parts of the uh, of the book, but they're not going to be spoilers, so don't worry. I won't give you any um, any spoiler any spoiler any spoilers in this review. So I would not worry about that. I'm just going to touch on a couple of things because of the um, of what this story is about. And without further ado, let us begin with this description because that is the best way to begin. Okay. The Lady of Shalott reclaims her story in this bold feminist reimagining of the Arthurian myth from the New York Times best-selling author of Ash Princess. Everyone knows the legend of Arthur destined to be a king of the beautiful Guinevere who will betray him with his most loyal knight Lancelot of the bitter sorceress Morgana who will turn against them all. But Elaine alone carries the burden of knowing what is to come, for Elaine of Shalott is cursed to see the future. On the mystical isle of Avalon, Elaine runs free and learns of the ancient prophecies surrounding her and her friends. Countless possibilities almost all of them tragic. When their future comes to claim them, Elaine, Guinevere, Lancelot, and Morgana accompany Arthur to take his throne in stifling Camelot, where magic is outlawed, the rules of society chain them, and enemies are everywhere. Yet the most dangerous threats may come from within their own circle. As visions are fulfilled and an inevitable fate closes in, Elaine must decide how far she will go to change fate and what she is willing to sacrifice along the way. So, before we start um, the review, there is one thing I actually want to read to you that I need to look for. Um, in order to in order to uh, a, ma maintain to give you some of the of the main uh, of the big the interesting parts, I think it's important to know why an author writes the book that she wrote, and if they offer up the reason, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't um, you know we shouldn't read it right. But like because. Um, this author wrote this specific book for a specific reason and I think it's important that I read this for this review because I have a re I have a, I have a point to all of this but while I'm looking for it I can tell you one thing um, the writing I can give you some of the basics of my review that I tend to look at to, to look for when uh, when reading the writing is amazing I, I liked the writing. I think that something that Laura Sebastian does well, that she definitely demonstrated in her previous trilogy, uh, Ash Princess, is that she writes very well-realized female characters. And I 
I love it, you know? I, as a woman, want to read women that feel natural, not that, that they, not that feel, uh, like, uh, what's a really good example? Ah, yes, Nevernight. Nevernight by J. Kristoff. I don't want them to feel like that. That was an insult to women writing, if I've ever seen one. I was just like, I was humiliated. I was, I was just like, why would you do that to anyone? I was, I was just like, I was out. It was done, right? But basically, I do think that she writes well, realized characters, especially female leads. Um, the male leads also have the same kind of realization, but I do think that she did very well with our point of view character. I would, um, this is not really a, 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 a like a, a, a bad thing, but I will say this. I would have loved for her to add Guinevere and Morgana's point of views a little bit more. Um, she, um, so from what I've read of her writing bef pre before and now, she tends to stick to one point of view, and we end up um, and we end up seeing everything and everyone through that point of view, and that's okay. I don't mind that. I just um, because we had so many. Um, arcs going on I would have loved to see Morgana and Guinevere's point of views because um, so much uh, happens I think in this book uh, the pacing was very good and um, I think the development of the story worked out well for what she was doing as well as the character development was amazing I did also enjoy the romance uh, between Elaine and Lancelot I think that was amazing so those are the those are definitely my the things I definitely want to talk about. But before I continue the rest of this, I do want to read this afterword that Laura that Laura Sebastian wrote at the end of her book, so that we have an idea as to her thought process when writing this book. So here we go. As a depressed teenager, when I first read Tennyson's *The Lady of Shalott*. Of course, I connected to the image he paints of Elaine, look, locked away. I'm sorry, locked away, alone in her tower, forced to view life secondhand through a mirror without ever actually participating in it. For me, that mirror was always fiction, and so at 17, I started writing the first draft of Half Sick of Shadows. It isn't surprising that Elaine of Shalott was such a popular cultural figure during the Victorian era, a favorite of poets like Tennyson and the pre-Raphaelite painters. She was seen as the ideal woman, especially when compared to the evil Morgana and traitorous Guinevere. She was passive and kind she did as she was told she was so wholly dependent on her husband that she literally couldn't live without him she became a cursed woman in a tower weaving at her loom day in and day out a fairy tale princess who could not be saved but here we are now in the 21st century and that is no longer the kind of heroine we want or need. The version of Elaine's story you've read is, I'm happy to say, completely unrecognizable from that first draft I wrote more than a decade ago, in large part because I did eventually realize just how problematic Tennyson's original poem is and how inherently sexist Arthurian mythology is as a whole. The women in the canon are seductresses and manipulators, prizes to be won and sacrifices to be made. As I grew up and my worldview shifted, so did my version of Elaine. She grew a backbone. She took on her own agency she came into her own kind of power. She stopped living on the outskirts of someone else's story. She left her tower. Writing 
that journey has been a challenge, but an immensely gratifying one. And in many ways, Elaine and I grew up together. Half Sick of Shadows is the result of that growth and broadening perspective. And it is truly, as we writers like to say, the book of my heart. I hope you loved it as much as I do. Reading this thing reminded me kind of of, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, oh, I forgot. Um, oh, of uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is the one book she always wanted, you know, to publish. She's been writing it for like 10 years and it's like that book. But that's what kind of what it reminded me of. But let's talk about how this ends up, um, ends up focusing in the story. So before, um, so she bases it on a poem um, called The Lady of Shalott, which I have read. Um, and, and by the way, just for the record, in my original first draft of this video, I actually had read you that poem, but I hated how it turned out. So we're going with my second filming where I don't read it to you and I tell you about it as best as I can from my memory. So forgive me if I just, if my if my memory of it does it no justice. It was a well-written poem. I, I'm gonna give it that. It was a very well-written poem. It just isn't, you know, awesome. Like. I, I also, just fun fact, wrote a paper on it where I basically criticized a couple of the things about the poem, uh, mainly how, how the writer omitted a couple of things like Elaine's feelings. But anyway, Tennyson's poem is loosely based on Arthurian legend. It's not fully based, just loosely based. I did do some research on it. It is loosely based and basically Elaine's story in the Arthurian legends from the research I was able to do, from the very little research, is that she... I can't remember the full circumstances. There is a version that says that she went to, that El uh, Lancelot went to her father's castle. And she, uh, I don't know the full circumstances, but you know, at some point she became infatuated with Lancelot. And you know, he didn't love her. He wasn't, he had an affair, I think with Guinevere at the time. And basically he, you know, she ended up, you know, drowning to death. And basically she was like on a boat, I think she was headed to Camelot or something, and she ended up, you know, she ended up dying of heartbreak. That is her basic legend. The poem itself um, ta does tell her story of um, a woman who is stuck in the, uh, in her, in this room. She's literally in a room, not even just a tower, it just says a room where she is uh, weaving in her loom and does pretty much as she was told. Uh, it tells of a passive woman who did not, um, did not, you know, contradict anything that she was told. She heard about the rumor that if she was to leave Camelot, she would die, and that she's cursed to see all that. And she pretty much lives life through the mirror, and and she weaves the visions that the mirror shows her. But eventually, she sees Lancelot and. Um, and you know the people passing but mainly that's a lot and she ends up deciding to leave the room in the loom in general and she takes a boat to um to camelot and there she ends up drowning on her way there and it ends with you know everybody kind of seeing who she is and seeing her and lancelot literally complimenting her beauty and may god basically give her soul grace or whatever um, the poem has, like, the main thing it repeats, the poem is the Lady of Shalak, but also the poem itself tells of, um, you know, it it gives descriptions of, uh, of, of, like, Camelot and the river and the people. Uh, it looks like they think of Elaine as a fairy. Um, some people don't know who she is. They've never seen her. They've never seen her wave, the surrounding people. So... It, it does set up this atmosphere of a woman that has been unseen and basically is invisible to everyone. Um, so that is the, or those are the, ori that's the original source material and from what it's based on. Arthurian legends in general are fascinating to me just because of the mythology. I really want to read Limort D. Arthur 
I don't know when I'll be reading it, but I do actually want to read it in order to um, to give myself that, like you know, to know to know what it is uh, to read to fully read it. I did. I do remember reading a uh, a comprehensive collection of Arthurian legends in high school in my free time, and I remember parts of it, but not everything. And she. Um, she took a lot of uh, Laura Sebastian took a lot of the things I do remember, and basically made them into the visions that uh, that were seen in the book. Um, an example is uh, Guinevere's end ending in the Arthurian legends and the original legends um, when she when her uh, when her affair is discovered she um, you know she's supposed to be executed Lancelot rescues her and she ends up in a convent. That is the original and you know that comes up in the story along with how Ar you know Arthur's death along with pretty much a couple a bunch of other things really but um but what this story does that I like is that it it shows the process of which Arthur became king it gives an entire process not to mention um adding some really awesome um court intrigue which i enjoyed a lot um, i love court intrigue and court politics in general um so it added a lot of this uh a lot of this court intrigue and a lot of like this society of um that they have they have in camelot in the expectations of men versus women which i i i, I loved and she put up this uh this theme where women pretty much are mainly prizes and meant to be sacrificed as she herself discusses in that afterward and because elaine grew up um elaine you know did does you know grew up in avalon and through for 10 years of her life and she you know the main thing that she morgana and guinevere and even lancelot but especially those th them three were 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 basically told is like the main thing that they had to learn is they had to put arthur on the throne arthur above all else and due to that they had to make many many sacrifices elaine was the one that kind of orchestrated a lot of things in 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 um in camelot in order to make certain that arthur ended up in the throne on the throne because it was the best way of peace um it was the best way to peace but in the process, she, we see how her, the things that she makes happen end up affecting other people and the way relationships are fractured and the way, um, the way things go uh, at the end, through the end. We see, the, we see her as, as Arthur's taking the throne. We see as she, um, as she also kind of breaks apart a little bit, but also how the people around her start breaking apart and how her decisions fracture the relationships especially the ones between Guinevere Morgana and her and there and some of her actions almost fracture her relationship with Lancelot as well because of some of the actions that she that she was taking um and Arthur is kind of the more like you know he's the one that has to be put on the throne but he's also you know he's he's also kind of naive and kind in a way and the naivete is just a lot but basically due to that simple fact uh due to the fact that they they have to do all this stuff you know elaine ends up sacrificing a lot and eventually um she 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 pushes morgana to the visions that she has seen of morgana without pretty much realizing it. But, uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, Morgana draws a line um, because of all the sacrifices she has made. And, but Elaine and Guinevere do not, um, not until the very end where Elaine realizes she has crossed a line and that she doesn't want to cross it again. And she ends up making the, the major sacrifice, a big thing that was leading up to the very, very, from the very beginning of the story but it was definitely an interesting um it, it was an interesting journey to 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 read about and see how actions how her actions really did um fracture her relationships 
um, eventually she did amend them, but how, but you know how how her actions did fracture those relationships and how in sight she did have to make a lot of sacrifices in order to make sure Arthur was on the throne and that peace is restored to Albion. Um, but I did enjoy writing that journey. Now this is supposed to be a bold feminist reimagining of the um, Arthurian legends. Did Laura Sebastian um, make that happen? Do you think she did? Let me know in the comments. I, in my part, do think that she did a really good job of making it a definitely bold and feminist. I think she made a good, um, she made Elaine a great heroine and I did see her Elaine take over her story. It was slow burn. It was definitely slow burn to see Elaine take, reclaim her story. And I liked that style. This book is also written in like two different tenses where the past is written in past tense and the present is written in present tense, which I think was done pretty well. I, I, I was okay with that. I did not mind. And we got a bunch of flashbacks of her life before and how it all shaped her to what she ends up doing at the end. And I think that was actually very well written and the exposition, the execution, I'm sorry, was uh, was well and I, I felt it was definitely a bold and feminist retelling. It's a type of heroine I definitely like to read about. So um, this got a full five stars from me. I enjoy it a lot. I think it was a great book and that it had so much, so much potential and that I, I it just, it worked out very well um next up will be a recommendations list i should have it depend uh i should have it to you guys 12 at 12 eastern standard time um 11 central and 9 pacific so definitely take a look at that i should have it for you guys soon um but i uh i am very happy for this book it's definitely all i really wanted it to be and i'm proud that i was able to make this uh to make this review finally and that i was actually able to read it it was a great book and i think i i um i enjoyed the week i was reading it so i had a lot of fun so with that let me know in the comment section your thoughts do you think she made it in she managed to uh make this book into a feminist retelling i think she did but what do you think I'd love to know if you've read it let me know um sorry for this review being a little bit longer with a lot more information but i think it was necessary since it has to do with arthurian legends again arthurian legends are fascinating so why not talk about them so yeah let me know your thoughts on all this stuff do you like arthurian legends i'd love to know uh give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in more content Turn on notifications so that you're aware the moment I release a video. And I post at least once a week. Mondays are my review days usually. So yeah, if you have any requests or ideas for videos, feel free to comment down below or contact me privately through social media or my email, which will be left in the description. So check out the description box for that. And check out the description for other great videos from me. I will have a playlist. I will have three playlists. I will have the playlist for my three main series in the channel. Feel free to check those out. And if I can, I'll have an affiliate link in the description if my account is still open um, through Amazon. So if my account is still open, I'll have an affiliate link in the description for this book if you're interested in it. Um, if you make a purchase, I make a small commission. I thank you very much for any support you, uh, you give me in that. And with that, I'll see you in my next video for recommendations. Bye everyone.